Well, hello and good morning. Welcome to What Are You Reading? And this morning, we're actually going to jump into the end of Galatians. Um, I just finished this book up just a few days ago, and there was a particular phrase that just grabbed my attention and um, sort of had a little devotional impact just to me personally, and I wanted to share it with you. So if you would, um, if you have your Bibles, jump in with me. If not, just go ahead and you're going to listen to this. And it's the very and it's essentially Paul signing off as he writes this letter to the Galatians. And just a little bit of context here. Throughout this book, he's been um, sort of correcting them of some behavior and some things that are happening in the church and people essentially getting to a place where they think a particular action, that they're talking about circumcision and uncircumcision and these actions and who's worthy of salvation because of them. And Paul is saying it is not that, it's all Christ. And so... You know, he has gone through this long explanation of all of this, and he gets to the end of it. And in verse 14, he says, May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I and to the, to the world. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is the new creation. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, to the Israel of God. And now here comes the good part. Verse 17. Well, the good part was before that too, but what, what we're going to focus on. Verse 17, from now on, let no one cause me trouble for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. And then he signs off the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. And so the phrase that got me and I kind of paused over it was the marks of Jesus. And that just sort of, um, I ended up scribbling down some, some notes the marks of Jesus, and you think things like holiness, gentleness, kindness, and yes, those are a marks of a heart turned to Jesus, but what he's talking about is the, the marks, the scars, the physical scars on his body, much like the ones of Christ, because he was crucified, carried those scars. And so it got me to thinking about how we tend to um, be drawn to the the good things, which are wonderful things, but we're drawn towards the marks of Jesus being um, holiness in us. And again, nothing wrong with those, but what if we focused also on the marks of Jesus being the very things that we're suffering through and they can leave scars. And so what was kind of funny was I was then on Pinterest the other day and I was just scrolling through and for some reason, you know, sometimes ads pop up and it was this little article and it says um, something about people turning scars on their body, like, you know, they've had surgery or something and turning them into clever or cute tattoos. And I clicked on it and I was looking through it and I'm like, wow, these people are so creative, but Talk about using a scar and transforming the way that it looks. And that just got me to thinking that, you know, when we view our scars, our marks as marks of Jesus, when they are marks for the gospel, um, when they are marks and, you know, sometimes we're called to suffer. We're called into suffering. We're called into a season of suffering or something we're waiting through, um, literally waiting or waiting through those can be times that leave scars, and yet, whenever we turn them and use them for the glory of the kingdom, are they not then marks of Christ? Are they not, now not in the same aspect as Paul is saying, where he's saying he's had physical, um, physical scars as in being abused for the gospel, but what about those scars in our hearts that for situations or things that have happened in life or, you know, loss of a loved one or financial insecurity or, you know, those seasons of life where you're just, you're struggling. And what if those scars are then used in light of the gospel and they can become marks of Jesus because his steadfast love carried you through those marks. So it just, it made me think of that. And somebody said recently, I don't even remember who the pastor was and I saw it on Instagram and he said, you know, grace is not anti-effort. It's not anti-effort. It's just anti-action based on faith. You know, faith is not action based, but it doesn't mean it's not anti-effort. And so our effort, even in those moments where we're being scarred, where we're being worn, that can be all called to the glory of God when we say God's walking me through this. And so you may bear scars. You may even bear physical scars from an ailment or something, but what if they are 
marks of Christ because you glorified the Lord through them. I'm thinking of a particular friend and just the scars that she carries physically on her body, and yet they are the marks of Christ because they glorified the kingdom all through them. And there were physical reminders of how faithful he was in the moments of her, like the darkest moments of her life. So anyways, that's just my little bit of encouragement for you. I think I said everything I wanted to say, but you know, just that you know, he makes those scars shine all the, all the brighter. And so, you know, what, I guess just take time today and think about what marks do you bear? What scars do you have in life? And do they glorify the Lord? Are you using them unto his glory? So if you would, would you just pray with me? Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you today. We thank you that even in the midst of trials, and um, through circumstances that do leave scars, Lord, that you are steadfast, that you are faithful, and that you use all things together for good. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you and ask that you would lead us as we glorify you each and every day, and especially with those scars and those marks that are for Christ. Lord, it's in your son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, thank you so much, and I will see you sometime next week.